Welcome back to In Ohio Country Today and from the SECO Science Symposium here in Lewis Center, Ohio. Joining me now is Jane Hunt. Jane is with Grow Next Gen and we spent a lot of time with Jeannie Gogolski. We've uh, run a lot of video on our television show and it's, it's nice to have you here with us. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Tell us about the, uh, the SECO uh, Science Symposium. What exactly is this? Well, this is the Science Education Council of Ohio, which is really the Science Teacher Association. And um, that association has not been able to meet in person for several years. So this is really kind of a nice reunion to be able to see all of our friends. Uh, we've been here for, I don't know, probably six or seven years uh, presenting on behalf of Grow Next Gen. We've met several people at Grow Next Gen before in the past, and of course one of our fine sponsors, the Ohio Soybean Council that helps support Grow Next Gen. Tell us about what you do there. Well, we are, in fact, uh, their education group. So my company is Education Projects, and we were hired by the Ohio Soybean Council about 25 years ago to do some work for soybean growers and to get soybeans in the classroom. That was the whole thing, was trying to get soybeans in the classroom. So that's been our mission from the get-go, and in not in an ag science classrooms only, but also in regular ed science teacher classrooms. So that's why we're here with the general science conference, and um, we've been very well received. It's been a very great conference. You know, Grow Next Gen literally has done that. They're, they're working to grow the next generation of science and science teachers here in the Buckeye State, but more importantly, explaining what soy is and what it does and how it contributes to our economy is one thing, but the aspect of how diverse it is it's got to be a lot of fun for you guys being there for 25 years you've probably seen this metamorphosis uh, of, of changes on how the soybean has made it an integral part of our lives no matter what it is Oh yeah, it's always a surprise to people to find out what they eat that has soy product in it, what they're using. Uh, for instance, we, there's soy back turf that's actually at some of the football stadiums around the state. So just how, how widespread soy products are has really been kind of an eye-opening experience with all the bioproducts that they, we find them in. Let's talk about your relationships with some of the other institutions like Ohio State, Central State University, trying to make sure that those students that come out of high school select this as a field. Yeah, one of the aspects of Grow Next Gen and, and the Ohio Soybeans Education Program is a workforce development arm. And so through that workforce development, we work with those pre-service teachers in agriculture to help them understand the breadth of careers that are out there uh, for their students. That, you know, they're teaching ag students, students who already show an interest in agriculture, and we want them to be aware of all of those careers. But in addition, that's another thing that we do here. Uh, we've been working with pre-service science teachers up in Mansfield and at Ohio State and what we do is we present we talk about all of our resources but we also talk about why it's important we want our students to have careers when they graduate and not live in their parents basements so it's always a good thing to, <laughs> to be talking about careers yeah, that's always a good thing when it comes to careers though have you seen some of those students that you had engagement with in high school then go on to college and maybe come back to work for Grow Next Gen? Well, no one comes back to work for us, unfortunately, but they are working in ag-related fields. So we have several teacher leaders at the Global Impact STEM Academy, and Global Impact in Springfield uh, has had many of their students go on to become agriculture, education, communication, business majors, um, and they're really doing some amazing things. Um, we also have some teachers in uh, D Dublin. We have a teacher, specific teacher in Dublin, who uh, works at Dublin Jerome, Chuck Crawford, and he has several students who, you know, again, coming from Dublin background, know agriculture, and they found that agriculture is the place for them after going through his environmental science class and using some of the materials. So it's very exciting. What's exciting is that, of course, a lot of students in high school are introduced through FFA and 4-H to agriculture, but What's surprising to me, and tell me if I'm wrong, is the integration with more city schools, more urban schools that are finding that an ag future is something that could be very beneficial to them. 
Well, I worked at Upper Arlington for 26 years and taught environmental science and biology. And my students, when they were trying to apply for college, I would always suggest the College of Agriculture. And they were like, Mah. I don't want to be a farmer, but they were unaware of all of those other careers that are out there. And the other thing I always tell my students is that everybody eats. So you've got a food, you know, pretty secure job. Job security is pretty important in this market. So um, I was always trying to convince them that agriculture is a way to go. Um, it, you know, even biology majors and, uh, you know, talking about pre-med. And I saw... a. a I saw a poster at Ohio State one time that said, plants need doctors too. So <laughs> trying to get people to think about plant pathology and, and how can we better you know, protect the yield of these commodity crops that really drive our uh, agriculture or drive our economy. And you mentioned it earlier too, it's not just about ag and food when it comes to the soybean, but the diversity of that product has just grown immensely. So let's touch on that again. You mentioned a little bit about turf. There are so many other things that are being used uh, that soy is used in, so maybe touch on that a little bit. Oh yeah, well through the research that the Soybean Council sponsors at Arable Labs, they're also learn, you know, finding all kinds of new uses. So uh, in lubrication, machine oil for, oh, yeah. for uh, power saws. Um, also we, at our outreach, <laughs> we have another area, which is our outreach ambassadors. And at the fair last year, we bought all of our outreach ambassadors sketchers that have soy-based polymer in their sole of their shoe so that they were comfortable on their feet the entire time while they were working at the Ohio State Fair <laughs> doing activities with people. So and then they could talk about a bioproduct that they were actually wearing. Um, of course, Goodyear tires have soy. Sherwin-Williams uses soy-based oils in their paints so or polymers. So there are lots of different uses that are all around us and people are just generally not aware. And we would be remiss if we didn't talk about soy biodiesel and what that has done, not only for the environment, but for the expansion of trying to come back to renewable fuels here in the Buckeye State. Before we let you go, Jane, let's talk a little bit about your background. You to told me earlier you do have a little bit of ag background, right? Yeah, well, I was a biology and environmental science teacher, so I didn't teach agriculture. But as a child, my grandparents owned a farm down the street, and so whenever they needed us to clear the rocks out of the field so that the plowed <laughs> blades didn't bend, because that was a long time ago. Um, I, we would pick up rocks and throw them up on a big wagon. Um, and then in the front field, particularly along the road, uh, if there were weeds growing, we were out there pulling weeds. And I thought it was the best thing ever, because I was like six, and these were bigger weeds than me. And I'm like yanking on them. So, but yeah, and then I bailed straw later on when I was a little bit bigger. But um, yeah, that was never a thought in my mind that I would be helping people to make the connection about science and agriculture. Right. So this has been a really, a really great experience after I retired from teaching and started working full time. Our uh, co-host on In Ohio Country today, Alan Davis, would attest we're still pulling rocks out of the fields. So <laughs> that's something that's never going to change. Exactly. One thing that's not going to change for one of the greatest uh, businesses here in the Buckeye State, the Ohio Soybean Council, is their investment in organizations like Grow Next Gen. And Jane Hunt has been our guest. Jane, once again, thanks. You, thank you so very much for joining us. Oh, we really appreciate the coverage. We love getting that message out. So again, thank you for being here. And from the 2023 SECO Science Symposium here in Lewis Center, we'll be back with more in Ohio Country today right after this.